and then a velvety bag. Oh, baby, the weight is good. It feels like a Pro Max in there. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. So before we get into today's video, I want to announce a giveaway. I got a couple of those new purple iPhone 12s, the mini and regular size uh, for you guys. So if you're a subscriber here on the channel, leave a comment down below with your Twitter handle for your chance to win a purple iPhone 12. This is only for subscribers though. Good luck everyone. Today we have something very special. This came all the way from China and just showed up here. And you know when you see this type of tape on top, you're in for something special because it came a long way. And that's what this did right here. Inside this package, supposedly, is the closest best look yet at the next generation iPhone, the iPhone 13. In this case, I believe it's gonna be 13 Pro Max. It is not a completely functioning unit. It is a mock-up, some like to call it, a model, but I've been told it's fairly high quality. In other words, the materials in use, metal and things like this to mimic the eventual unit that will uh, hit the market at some time soon. Everyone is always trying to predict exactly what that next iPhone is gonna look like. And inside this box, we probably have our closest look yet. And I have a bunch of other phones to compare here as well. So uh, what is this? A mini, a regular, a Pro Max and a Pro from the 12 series. So we'll be doing that comparison also. The rumors have been that we we're going to, going to see bigger individual camera units on the back, as I just mentioned, and also that we were gonna have a slightly smaller notch. Now, I don't know on this construction how they're going to represent a smaller notch, like how they're gonna kind of map it in there, but hopefully we can catch some measurements there because a lot of people have been waiting a long time for a shrunken notch. I don't know how much you care about it, but Apple has been maintaining this large scale notch for good reason because they're hiding all of their face ID tech inside of there. But if they can pack it into a slightly smaller region and give you more screen, why not? I think anybody would be happy with that. All right, so, ooh, <laughs> secret packaging. Uh, like look at the reused box with the grease stains inside. Some chicken wings were in there previously. That's how you know you're about to have a good time. Uh, a little bit of bubble wrap and a little bit more packing foam paper stuff. Ooh, and then a velvety bag. I don't think the last time I got one of these devices, I don't think that was in there. Oh, baby, the weight is good, very realistic. It feels like a Pro Max in there. Ladies and gentlemen, that is one of the Wow, that is easily the best mock-up I have ever felt in my entire life. Holy cow. It feels like a real iPhone, exactly balanced in a similar fashion. Now, weirdly, it looks like the Apple logo has been scratched up a little bit. I'm not sure how, like why that might be the case. Did they have to do that? in order to destroy the trademark aspect. I have no clue. And maybe it happened in shipping somewhere along the line, but it looks intentional to me with the scratching there. Otherwise, the actual finish on here, very similar. Let me just go over here real quick and pull out a regular iPhone 12 Pro Max, okay? Weight-wise, they nailed it. It's pretty much identical now the position of the Apple logo, almost identical, dimensions almost identical. What's the difference here? Well, obviously the color is different. This is that graphite over here, we have the blue. The camera modules substantially increase in size and possibly height on the new Pro Max model or the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Is it ever so slightly taller? It might be. We're gonna get the calipers out. It's definitely fatter. I'll tell you that right now, it is definitely fatter. Now, if they do go with some new display technology 
and they want to maintain battery capacity, there is a potential that we are going to end up with an ever so slightly fatter device for the next generation iPhone 13. Okay, now on the front, this is the other key. It looks to be protected here. It has the shrunken notch, big time shrunken notch. Now, I don't know how easy this is going to be for you guys to see, but it is smaller. Actually, yeah, so for the purpose of the measurement, I'll use a phone, an iPhone that's turned on. Oh, this is the graphite. Oh, so you can see the color's a little different too. On this 13 Pro Max model, it's a little bit darker. Is that gonna be a reality? I don't know how much they're capable of nailing the colors preemptively. And let's see the frame. The frame's a little bit lighter too and more reflective. Also, the antenna bands are light as opposed to dark, which I'm not sure that's gonna be the case. So on this side of the unit, they're identical. You have your volume buttons, your vibrate switch, and you can see mapped out over here where the SIM tray would be. Other side of the device, we have our power switch, power button, which surprisingly actually works on this model as well. And then on the bottom of the device, I think they're identical. So it's not that thing that was rumored with like the portless iPhone, uh, apparently not this version, at least uh, if you go based on this particular model, you still have a lightning port on the bottom. It looks like a little bit different, but essentially that's a lightning. It's not a type C, so no luck there, no type C. You're gonna see portless, I guess, before you see type C. Now, another note about the notch and the shrinkage of the notch, a key factor there is the relocation of the earpiece. So as you can see on the old model, the earpiece is in the central part of the notch. And then on the iPhone 13 model, you have it move up to the very fringe of the screen and up out of the way. So the entire notch lives below the earpiece. That's interesting. I thought for sure this one was fatter, but when I put them both face down like this, they're practically identical. Maybe it's just the color difference that's messing my brain up a little. Let's get the calipers and see if we can figure any difference there. So iPhone 13, 7.52, iPhone 12. They're the same. I mean, I can squeeze it a little more. Well, maybe they're slightly different. All right, it's a little tiny bit fatter, ever so slightly fatter. The other question is, does it get fatter up along the camera units? 10.36 there. Interesting, that one, okay. Same thing, a little bit fatter there. But I'm telling you, this is so marginal and relatively insignificant. We saw this happen with, and even more so, I guess, with the recent iPad, the iPad Pro 12.9, where they went to the mini LED technology and then ended up with a 0.5 millimeter fatter device, meaning it was no longer compatible with the previous generation Magic Keyboard. And on a phone, you would notice it more, but whatever it is, it's not, 0.5 millimeters. It's it's like 0.1 millimeter, something in that neighborhood. iPhone 13 Pro Max. I have 78.08 millimeters. This is the 12 Pro Max, 78.14. Hmm. 78.07. 78.14, a little bit more narrow. 160.85, these ones are almost identical, 160.82. Now the big one is right there, and the most obvious. Those look like some of the biggest individual camera modules I've ever seen on a phone, so we might as well measure those this way to see how big. Oh, there we go. 16.99 millimeters tall versus 14.10, this is the biggest difference on the entire design, is the camera size per individual module. Now, 
This could be different for the other models. Obviously, you're gonna have the 13, 13 mini, 13 pro, and then pro max. So that could be different on a per model basis, but to give you an idea of how much those things scaled up, they scaled up more than any other singular dimension. Although I should check the notch as well. So this is just a regular pro model right around there, 34.62 millimeters on the old notch. Now the new one is tough for you to see right over it. This is another more significant change. So 26.31 millimeters on the iPhone 13 Pro Max model. That's gonna be your big changes from a physical perspective. There are other rumors around Touch ID potentially showing up in display or possibly in the power button. This power button doesn't seem to be a sign that that's where it would live. So there's rumors about Touch ID in display in order to deal with the fact that nowadays people are wearing masks and are in certain circumstances where Face ID is not as functional. And then obviously you'd expect to see camera improvements with the enormous camera modules. Also, and this is a big one for myself on the display side, Never mind the shrunken notch, but what about the display itself? The rumor here is 120 Hertz ProMotion like they have on the iPads, like a lot of other manufacturers in the Android space have. So finally, a faster refresh coming to iPhone, at least for the Pro Max model, that would be cool to see. So anyway, there you have it. This is our best look. It does, it's gonna take me a while to get used to that. That is a real statement. Increasingly, the phone is becoming the camera and the camera is indicating to everybody around you which model you happen to have. And that's definitely the case here. You're gonna notice that thing right there. But yeah, that's a look, an early look, the best look yet. I'm actually kind of... Uh... It's kind of cool to be handling this right now, so far ahead of the actual launch of it, but that's the way it goes with Apple products. People want to know as far in advance as possible when it comes to figuring out what to expect with the next version, and hopefully this helps out a little bit. So there's your measurements, and there's your look. The iPhone 13 Pro Max modeled. Oh, also, thank you very much for watching and making it all the way to the end. If you want your chance to win one of these iPhone 12 purple models, Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then leave your Twitter handle down in the comment section for your chance to win. Good luck. Look at that beast.